Hello and welcome PML fans. I am your host and head admin of PML, Joseph Moore here. And with me, I got the coach of the Myrtle Magic Arts, James Walters. Yo, yo, how's it going, everybody? Uh, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. How about yourself, Joe? I'm doing good. Ready yeah. to get this season started, really. Yeah, man, this is uh, this is going to be my first YouTube uh, league, so I'm actually, I'm actually really excited. Uh, I'm hyped for it as well. All right, man. Well, let's go ahead and jump into it. Um, this is your first YouTube draft league, but what's your draft history aside from that? Yeah, so good question. Uh, I started probably two years ago. I mean, I played competitively in 2011 um, in Pearl and Diamond. So I, I played in the VGC world for a while out there. Um, and then I just took a massive break and I picked it back up in NPBF. So... Um, I don't know if you know Jeff Bridges or Rennie. I don't know if you know any of those guys, but um, they've been doing this. I think we're on like our 16th season or something. So they've been doing this for, for many moons now. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so I started and, and still with them now. All righty, man. Um, uh, what made you choose your logo? Oh, my logo. Well, I mean, you and I have done a uh, podcast together just about about uh, how Magikarp becomes Gyarados, right? The whole mythos behind that. Oh yeah. Um, but I have a I have a good friend. Her name's Yasmin. She makes she makes excellent logos, the artwork. Um, and I wanted something that showed Magikarp as sort of the mascot of the team. But in the background, always be aware, right? Because Ma Magikarp could turn into Gyarados at any time, just like in the show. Oh yeah. You know, kick the Magikarp. Eight Gyarados appear kind of thing, so uh, that's sort of the that's the logic behind it. I got you. Yeah, it's a dope logo. And uh, you want to explain to people why you call yourself the Myrtle Magic Part? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so uh, again, I guess I, I'm, I'm pretty nerdy as it is, but uh, big Harry Potter Harry Potter fan. And you guys all know Moaning Myrtle. I thought she was the funniest character back in the day. I got a kick out of her. I don't know why a pervy ghost. I just thought that was funny. So uh, Myrtle Magikarp, I just put them together and and uh, figured it would, most people would probably think it's Myrtle Beach and that would be good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it does got the alliteration going with the double M. That's right, that's right. It sounds good coming off the, off the list. All right, man, would you ever consider changing your logo? Ooh, um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'd consider it. Uh, I don't know if I would change the the mascots i mean dude i'm living i'm live eat breathe magikarp and gyarados dude those are <laughs> my favorite pokemon so all right um so that's gonna lead into another question later but um real quick how do you feel pml draft will be different from other drafts okay that's a that's a great question so i I'm, I'm familiar with a couple of the people in there uh mainly you and david and one I, David and I talk about it. So after speaking with him, he said it's going to be a pretty competitive league. Um, I think that just the overall upkeep upkeep of it, you know, we have to keep stats. We have to both, both trainers have to record. I think it's going to kind of be a, I don't want to wing this type of league. Like, you know, you want to take your time. You don't want to be made a fool of. Definitely don't want to get six up in this league if there's going to be video <laughs> proof here. So oh, yeah. I think... I think it's going to be a, a more competitive and a more scrutinized league, meaning like we have to be on our stuff as coaches, which I'm excited about because that means more prep, that means more care and drafting, uh, and I'm, I'm excited about that. I, I haven't really taken a league serious, serious. Uh, like I don't do calcs or anything like that, and I think I might have to now. Oh, that's very uh, high standard of you to say for the PML draft. <laughs> just just what I've heard from David and, and you know, seeing how you're handling things, I, I'm pretty impressed. Oh, yeah. Um, this is technically our fourth season. I mean, I've ran drafts two to three times a year for, like, the last four years. But uh, I consider there's only, like, one serious draft and then the other ones are just, like, a, like a polished leagues. Like, basically, uh, the people who are always competitive still join those. Mm -hmm. But it's mostly to see where they stand and see how they can improve their draft style. Gotcha, gotcha. They pick and choose things to work on in those drafts. Yeah, so basically those drafts will be where they just pick stuff they're not used to to get used to it. 
but then there's the draft at the beginning of the year for du- singles is in starts in January, and then okay. uh, double starts in March, and that's the one that's still going on right now. Uh, okay. That that's the one that's for the trophy that Jesse just won. So yeah, <laughs> I've seen that trophy a few times. He's proud of it. <laughs> and uh, the, every year, it, competition gets harder and harder. Like especially uh, from what Jaden said. I don't know if you know Jaden. <clears throat> He, he was our champion season two, and then okay. he won the for fun draft as well. And ever since then, he's just been like, fuck, it's been hard. <laughs> <laughs> Com- competition gets stronger every year. Yeah, you know you're doing good if championship, or past champions are saying, man, it's getting difficult. Um, Seeing that Gyarados is your mascot Pokemon, who are you expecting to draft with your number one pick? Oh, it's going to be good. Yeah, assuming nobody snipes me just to, just to spite me, I think it'll <laughs> still be there. Uh, yeah, I'm, I draft favorites. I always I always do. I just think that I happen to like a couple of really competitive Pokemon. I mean, Gyarados is so versatile, right? You can mm-hmm. run an Intimidate set. You can run a Moxie set. Um, you can run a if we're you know if, if there's depending upon the the type of play, you can Dynamax with the Max Airstreams, you know, etc. So uh, just overall versatility, and it just happens to be my favorite. Yeah, whenever Gyarados hits the screen, most people shit their pants. So, right, you you don't <laughs> you're you're hoping you have a thunderbolt somewhere, but you're also like, okay, I can't let him dragon dance. That too, it's, it's yeah. like it's one of those things where like I could switch out to get the benefit on it, but if you brought dragon dance, one dragon dance is enough to just sweep a team, especially right. if you go Moxie. But even then, you don't need the Moxie because its attack power is just so high. Yeah. Yeah, he's a beefy boy, man. <laughs> well, how do you feel about the tiers? How do I feel about the tiers? I looked at all of them. Um, as far as like, what do I think is uh, is it our Pokemon well placed? Is that what you mean? Yeah. How how do you feel about that? Like, um, I yeah. know it's not the same as most people because we don't really go off Smogon tiers. Uh, we, right, we pretty so, much made our own. Yeah. So explain that to me. So you guys, because the way it works is there's. Um, there's three picks between the three and fifth tiers, correct? Uh, four free picks, yes. Four free picks. Okay, so let me see if I get this. So, yeah, two twos. Yeah, so whenever I look at the tiers, and I'll just I'll just take a touch at them real quick, um, what strikes me is I definitely think there's some Pokemon in tier three where I'm like, I gotta hope I can get those for all my all my free picks. Uh, I'm looking at Pokemon like Scrafty. Anybody who gets Scrafty as a tier three free pick, that's I think that's a excellent Pokemon. Um, Vickavolt's down there. I mean, there's just a lot of options in tier three that I think are. Uh, it's, you can't put them in tier two already because tier two is probably the the most frequented tier, but they're they're discount tier twos. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, um, we uh, going into planning. We did see that. Uh... You only get one tier one, so we made the tier one pool really small. We yeah. made the tier two pool decently large since we get two picks now, since Megas aren't a thing anymore. And then uh, pretty much ever after that, it's uh, what are you willing to risk taking right away as a tier right. three pick, and then what are you waiting to see falls as a free pick? Right, right. And there are some other Pokemon. I mean, Clefairy being tier five, that's going to be a snatch really soon, I bet. Um, just looking at some of these others, man, there's going to be some good, <laughs> there's going to be some good teams. I think that's for sure. <laughs> Alrighty, man. Um, that leads me to my next question here. What is your favorite battle strategy? Ooh, my favorite battle strategy. Oh, I, I would say my favorite battle strategy is probably a trick room setup. So I enjoy I enjoy setting up on people either either by setting up my own stats or by like throwing an intimidate uh, switch in mon. So like maybe Incineroar and Gyarados, and they expect you to set up with Gyarados, but then you run into Incineroar and you just keep lowering their stats. Um, so I, I enjoy a, a setup or a trick room sort of strategy. I, I think that those are easy to predict, but when you get them off, it feels really good. Okay. And um, is there a specific mon other than your first pick you're trying to get to fit that scheme? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, Crooked Isle is one of them. I think that's a tier two. Uh, big Crooked Isle fan. Or if I could get um, Arcanine. I think Arcanine is T3 or tier two. Uh, that well, one's I, tier two. Yeah, that's tier two. I, I, I like the Intimidate switch ins. That's just something I'm probably going to run with. Uh, it's always a threat. And you don't have to bring either of them. But both of those Pokemon in particular, uh, with Arcanine, if the if I happen to have you know a grass Pokemon or something on my team that I need to bring, and I know the opponent's going to bring it, I can just run a Flash Fire Arcanine, right? Or I can run a Justified Arcanine or an Intimidator. There's just there's just so many different versatility uh, slots I can hit with Arcanine. And then Crocodile's just got that Moxie, that Moxie uh, ability that you can really run with with a Crook. Oh yeah, and it's so dangerous when you scarf it too. Exactly. Yep, a scarf truck. Ooh, those knockoffs will get you. <laughs> Alrighty, man. Well, that leads me to my final question here. Um, is there someone in PML you're excited to battle? Oh, it's David. It's no doubt David. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta put that dude in the dirt, man. I don't think I've ever beaten him yet in like a really serious battle. So, um, don't, don't, you know, don't tell him I said this, but he's a pretty damn good battler. So beating him, I'd feel like I, I maybe took the next step. Alrighty, man. Well, I'll make sure to block him on this video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. I don't want him to hear me complimenting. David, you're trash, dude. You're straight booty, dude. You're, you're no good. <laughs> Alrighty, man. Well, is there anything else you want to say to the fans before we go? No, guys. Uh, stay tuned. There's going to be some great battles. And, and you know, and uh, for my battles, if you guys have any ideas or thoughts, shoot them at me. I'm, I'm all for criticism here. And, and, yeah, Joe, thanks for having me. I'm excited, man. Oh, yeah. We'll see you again right after draft, so don't worry. It won't be long. All right. Perfect. Sounds good, man. Thanks for having me. No problem. All right, guys. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys next time.